Hello friends! Before we start with today's topic, I just want to say thank you to all of you who decided that yes, you enjoy this content and you want to see more. We just hit 100 subscribers, I'm truly humbled. Enough emotional talk. It's intro time. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. That's a hacking group we've been reporting on that's claimed responsibility for reasons attacked. All right, let me show you what an amazing hack we are going to create. With this hack, we can find pointers to the character class and to functions. Using those pointers, we can make our character effectively invincible and even turn him into a ghost. Now there's quite a lot of stuff we need to cover here and as always, I want you guys to understand what we are doing and why. Therefore, I am going to split this into a mini-series consisting of First, how to set up a decent DLL. Second, how to scan for pointers and how to handle errors. Third, how to find the character base address and offsets. And finally, number four, how to manipulate memory at the target locations to get the result we want. First of all, let's take a look at our target. Terraria is developed with XNA, which is based on .NET framework and it has no protection whatsoever. What does this mean for us? We can actually get the source code of the game with, for instance, IL Spy. Yes, you heard me right. We can actually study and, if we wish to, manipulate and recompile the source code. Well, that's pretty useful. But there are also issues. Pretty much everything, like functions and objects, are only loaded into memory once they are needed. Also, where in memory they are loaded is very much non static. If we go for the traditional approach, which we will, that's an issue. But if you watched my previous video, you already know the solution, memory scanning. There is a completely different approach we could go for, but that one only works with .NET games, so I will not cover it for now. But I will leave some resources down below and if you are interested, I might make a video covering that possibility in the future. Now for this hack, we are going internal, which means we are going to inject a DLL into the game. Why? It's just easier, we have more direct access to the game memory. So let's set up our DLL. In Visual Studio, create a new project. Project type is library and pick dynamic link library. This is library. We don't need pre-compiled headers. So go to debug properties, C, C++, pre-compiled headers and set to not using pre-compiled headers. In our main CPP file, we already have some code, which we are actually going to use. This is the main function, which is called when the DLL is loaded or unloaded. When we inject the DLL into our target, the case which will apply is DLL process attach. So naturally, we want to put our code there. But actually, it's a bad idea to execute too much code directly in this function. So what we are going to do here is create a new thread and run our own main function on that new thread. Now we need to define the function we want to be executed by the new thread. Let's call it menu for obvious reasons. Inside this function, let's create a console and output some test string. Then write an infinite loop as we always do to get keyboard input. If we hit numpad 0, we break the loop. Afterwards, we gotta clean up. So let's close the dummy file and free the console. Ready for our first test? Build the project to get our DLL file. Now we need to inject it. Since we already have it installed, we might as well use cheat engine for injection. Attach it to the target. Then go to memory view, tools, inject DLL, select the file and hit open. Looks pretty good. The console opens, we can output text, for instance for debugging, and if we hit numpad 0, the console closes. Now back in Visual Studio, let's make some random change and try to build again. We get an error that we can't write to the file. Why is that? It's because the DLL is still attached to the game. So if we want to make changes, we have to close the game first, which kind of sucks. Well, there's always a solution. We can call the function free library and exit thread. But not within our menu function, we gotta do this from within a new thread, at least for me that's the case. So let's create another function and call it eject thread. Inside it, we just call the just mentioned free library function. And in the menu function, before returning, we start that new thread. The function takes a handle to our DLL module. This handle is the first parameter of DLL main. So we can just take it from there and store it into global variable. Okay, after closing the game, we can build this new version and inject it again. 
After hitting Numpad Zero this time, the DLL should be properly detached from the game. And we should be able to build our next version of the DLL without having to close the game. And indeed, now we can build our project without error. Alright friends, the initial setup and therefore the first part is done. Next time, we will implement the internal pattern scanner. Please do give me some feedback, consider subscribing if you would like to see more like this. Until next time friends, talk to you soon.